Today's episode is brought to you by Reptar Cereal. This is much more than a box of cereal. It's delicious little green balls made of whole grain vitamins and minerals that sparks your kid's imagination. So get served. Reptar for breakfast. Reptar, the cereal with scale. May contain nuts. Now let's talk about Rugrats. Rugrats is the brainchild of then husband and wife duo Gabor Chupo and Arlene Klasky, along with Paul Germain. It was born in Klasky and Chupo's major animation firm, which was also responsible for animating The Simpsons at the time. When Nickelodeon announced that they were going to launch their own line of animated shows, Klasky, Chupo, and Jermaine decided to create a show inspired by the antics of Klasky and Chupo's infant children, and believe it or not, the Beatles. There was a period after I had my second child that I decided I just want to stay home and take care of my kids. So I was working on some ideas at home for that. So the night before the pitch, Arlene Klasky, she comes to me and she says, I've got an idea for a show. I want to do a show about babies. I was fascinated that my kids, one was, you know, 14 or 15 months and the other one was almost four. If babies could speak, what would they say? And the main impetus was that we had to shut the bathroom door so that they wouldn't try to get in the bathroom to stick his hands in the toilet. The characters were co-designed by Peter Chung, Klasky, and Chupo specifically to look strange instead of cute as we often see in media. The show was set to focus on the day-to-day -day lives of a group of toddlers with common life experiences that became adventures in the baby's imaginations. This trio also directed the series opening sequence and pilot episode. In the original pilot that we made, it was just Tommy and Phil and Lil and the dog, Dee Dee and Stu and Grandpa, that's it. We were, it was sort of like the secret life of babies. Once the pilot and opening sequence were completed in 1990, they were submitted to Nickelodeon to be screen tested on an audience of children. And Klasky thought it was awful. There was a lot of mistakes and errors. And so when Gabor and I got that back, um, we, th we thought our hearts sort of sunk and we thought, oh my God, this looks really bad. We've got it, you know, and there, I think there were like something like 90 fixes that we had to do. But nonetheless, the pilot was positively received and the series went into production. But a few changes had to be made. Firstly, the series expanded its cast. In the series, I've got to have a group. And so, and I need characters that are gonna pull in opposite directions and create conflict because drama is conflict. So I thought, okay, if Tommy is the intrepid leader who always wants to go out and explore the world, mm -hmm. I need a reticent guy who's <laughs> f frightened of the world and doesn't wanna do that. And so that's how we came up with Chucky. The parents were always clueless. Having clueless parents was always a part of the show. The babies and the parents don't speak to each other. They're like in separate worlds. The, as far as the adults are concerned, the babies just talk baby talk and that's it. And as far as the babies are concerned, they pick up little bits of what the adults are saying, but they don't really yeah, understand They it, mispronounce right? the words. The only yeah. <laughs> connection between them in the series was Angelica. That's right. And the idea was that Angelica's older than the others, so she is the, she is the connection between the two worlds. She would give them the wrong information, or she she would sometimes do it purposely to torment them, or, or other times she would just get it wrong herself. We, we were talking about a bully character. Yeah. And I said, well, I want to do this bully that I had. There was, I was picked on by this. There was this really mean girl bully that used yeah. to pick on me. And I thought- You had an well, Angelica. I had an Angelica <laughs> in my life. And I thought, that's funny. Let's do a girl bully. I haven't seen that before. Yes. Now, Klasky never approved of Angelica Pickle's character development and even claimed that she never liked her. She never specifically explained why she disliked Angelica so much, just that her bullying caused Klasky to disdain her. And secondly, the show needed to find a way to bring all of the toddlers under one roof. So we started to have to come up with parents. So yeah. we came up with Betty and Howard, mm -hmm. and Tommy already had parents, so that was cool. In the meantime, we were thinking, okay, well, what about Chucky? And we came up with Chucky's dad, Chuck Sr., because we thought it'd be funny to have a, a like a Chucky who's a grown-up. We had no need to figure out Chucky's mom, so we didn't sure. do it. We just had him there. Yeah. And then people started asking us, well, tell, what's, what about Chucky's mom? Yeah. So we thought, well, she hasn't shown up. We don't want to suddenly have her show up. Right. So what are we going to do? Well, there's two possibilities. Mm -hmm. Either Chucky's mom is divorced from Chucky's dad mm -hmm. or Chucky's mom is dead. What if we do divorce? And people said, oh, no, no, you can't do divorce. That'll upset children. Okay, well, then she's dead. You go, well, you can't do death. <laughs> kids don't, kids don't want to see that. That's bummer. We can't do that. Yeah. 
And so finally we just said, well, I guess we can't do anything. <laughs> and so we made, so what we did instead is we just started making little joke references. Yeah. Chuck Sr. made a reference to his mom, which was which was vague yeah. in one of the episodes. I, Peter Gaffney, one of the writers came out with that and we threw that in. Yeah. But we never really dealt with the mom because people wouldn't let us. Despite only being 11 minutes long, Rugrats episodes took up to a year in advance to produce. Every stage required approval from the network. The script, the voice recording, storyboarding, overseas production, editing, and final polishing, all of it. All of that had to happen before Klasky Chupo even sent the master tapes to Nickelodeon. But finally, Rugrats premiered in 1991 as the second ever Nicktoon after Doug. By the end of the first season, Klasky started to complain that the Rugrats were acting too old for their age. This created off-screen tensions in the writer's room and naturally impacted the whole production. In 1994, production of new episodes went on hiatus, and most of the Rugrats writing team left Klasky Chupo. So we got to 65 episodes, we finished producing those in 1993, and then they went into repeats and we all went our separate ways to do other mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And then in the mid-90s, I want to say 95, 96, but I'm not sure exactly the mm -hmm. year, you can look it up. Um, Nickelodeon decided to run them in prime time, and then they really took oh. off. But that was after I'd already left. Rugrats episodes aired over 600 times in 1996, and despite the saturation, it remained one of cable television's most watched series that year. In 1995, the only new episode to survive the hiatus was A Rugrats Passover. This episode was actually unique enough to warrant media attention by the New York Times, which reviewed the episode as, if not a first, certainly a rarity to be an episode devoted to a Jewish holy day. The series followed up two years later with the first ever animated televised Hanukkah special. Some of you may think it now seems insignificant, but those holiday specials and the general Judaism of Rugrats were groundbreaking for television at the time. Another notable example was Hey Arnold, which featured Harold having his bar mitzvah despite never mentioning he was Jewish before or even ever again after the bar mitzvah episode. Now despite this milestone, Rugrats was criticized for its depiction of Tommy Pickle's grand grandparents, accusing their character designs of resembling stereotypes of Nazi-era Jews. Now, even with these challenges, the show resumed production in 1996 with most of the original team and residual tensions. Rugrats was the highest rated kids show from 1995 to 2000, with over 20 million viewers every week. The show was seen internationally in over 76 countries, making the characters of Rugrats even more recognizable to children than Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse. Even director Steven Spielberg described Rugrats as sort of a TV peanuts of our time. Now with this kind of monumental praise and success, the next step for Rugrats was clear, and the Rugrats movie was released in 1998. Let's not forget the movie also marks our introduction to Tommy's younger brother, Dill. I mean, just look at that face! The film grossed $140 million worldwide, and also making it the highest grossing animated film based on a television program until the premiere of The Simpsons movie in 2007. As you can imagine, this kind of box office result allowed other Nicktoons to become feature films and opened the door for networks to do the same with their cartoons. Even Klasky changed her tone towards the new Angelica. We now find ourselves in 2001, when Nickelodeon broadcasted the made-for-TV special All Growed Up in celebration of the series' 10th anniversary. The special acted as a backdoor pilot for the Rugrats spin-off series All Grown Up, which follows the lives of the babies and their parents 10 years into the future. I, I think the fantasy of they would be growing up with their fans was intriguing. Another spin-off series, Rugrats Preschool Days, was actually considered, but only four episodes were produced. And as they say, all great things must come to an end. And the final episode of Rugrats aired in 2004, ending the series with a total of 172 episodes and nine seasons during a 13-year run, earning a Hollywood Walk of Fame star and the most 90s thing ever, its own rap video. So if my math is correct, which it rarely is, the Rugrats kids would now be in their mid to late 20s? 
Sheesh, what are they like? Do you think Tommy and Chucky listen to, like, Drake or Kendrick Lamar? Do you think Phil and Lil are like Fortnite pros with their own YouTube channel? Do you think Angelica does TikTok videos? God, I hope not. Let me know what you guys think what the Rugrats are up to these days after checking out the links of our Patreon, TeePublic, and social media in the description. Stay awesome, geeks.